Hello, everybody. I've not got any super background to show you today, although things are coming up, little, little buds and things. Only I like this little thing that Louise gave to me, and it says, Jesus loves you. And I think all through this time, we have to remember that Jesus loves us. And so today we're thinking about the, two the three chapters from Exodus 10 to 12, written probably mostly by Moses and about 1446 BC. We remember that now Joseph had been forgotten in Egypt and there were new pharaohs and it says in my book that it could have been Thutmose the third or his son Amonhotep the second and that would have been about 480 years before Solomon's reign. We remember that the Hebrews had multiplied as though they would take over the land but they were very good workers. And Pharaoh thought it was better to keep them as special manpower. And he kept them as slaves and made it really hard for them, but he kept them down. And we can see echoes in that today by people who want power. And he thought, why should they go? He ate the produce that they grew and the animals they reared and his economy would slump completely if they went. So he couldn't let Moses and everybody go. So he tried cunning. He even says, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more. But it didn't work with Moses and Aaron. And God heard the cries of the Hebrews. He said, I will perform these miraculous signs of mine among you so that you could tell your children and grandchildren how I dealt harshly with the Egyptians and that you may know that I am the Lord. And so we have the plague of the locusts. And again, Pharaoh didn't listen. But God said, my wonders may be multiplied in Egypt. And so we come to the very dreadful killing of the firstborn. We remember it was all the Egyptian families were to be killed. The firstborn son from all of those and from together with the sons of some of the lowest slave women that they had not to Israelites, and the firstborn males of cattle even. And it was the ultimate punishment and plague so that the Pharaoh would let them go. And the other chapter is about the Passover. And he knows that um, <clears throat> God tells him how they are to celebrate the Passover, how they are to find the best, most, the best perfect sheep or goat from there amongst their flocks and are to, to uh, roast it that night. It has to be big enough to be enough to feed a whole family. And then before roasting it, they have to uh, put the blood aside in a bowl and with branches, daub it around their doors and the lintels at the top so that when the angel of death of the Lord would come at midnight their houses and their homes would be spared and so as well as that all the Israelites had to be ready to move keep their shoes on and be dressed ready to leave for the exodus so I can see two comparisons here associated with both events. The killing of the firstborn of Egypt uh, can be associated as a punishment for not letting 
the Israelites depart, it can be compared, compared with Jesus coming, God's only son, a perfect sacrifice for our sins. And then that can be also extended to the Passover because every perfect lamb being sacrificed for every family during Passover can also be made. But now in this epidemic, we're undergoing a similar time. Most of us have lost someone to COVID, perhaps near family, perhaps dear friends, as well as fellow church members whom we love so much and we feel they are separated from us they're suddenly gone and we can't even say goodbye to them so it's a very sad time for us but we know that God will fulfill his promises and that this time will pass and it's difficult to be patient meanwhile in the weekend paper last Sunday, the I, suggestions were made how we could liven up the day and feel happier. There were lots and lots of things, go for a walk, talk on the phone to a neighbour or friend and think of others, all very good. And a reply the next day, I have to look at it closer to read it. Faith provides support. And this is a letter from Iris Diddle from Kendall in Cumbria. I enjoyed reading your list of 50 ways to stay positive. May I say for me that there, is a, there was a glaring omission, a belief in the presence of God, a loving God. Countless Christians like me have been finding great support and encouragement and comfort in their faith. I'm sure that people of other faiths are finding such support and help in their beliefs too. So I'm glad that she wrote. I should have been uh, brave enough to write and get a, a, a letter in. And so from Psalm 57, I'll read this. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. And a prayer at the end. Tender God, protector, gentle protector, in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair and give us with all your people the song of freedom and the shout, shout of praise in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so may the Lord bless us and keep us safe until we meet again. And may we try and have some joy in our hearts at this time. Take care. God bless.